I recently turned 40, but my body feels like Joe Pesci's character at the end of Home Alone. Over the past few years, my health has started to decline. On top of slow recovery and a dip in energy levels, I've been having increased joint pain and stomach issues. I realized that I needed a drastic change to prevent my joints and gut from further deteriorating and other significant health issues from arising. I decided to sequence my genome through Nebula Genomics and use that data to hopefully improve my health using a more personalized approach. If you don't know what whole genome sequencing is, here's an overview. Whole genome sequencing is a process that involves reading the entire 3 billion letters of our DNA content in our cells to find out what letters make us unique and impact our health. So why did I choose Nebula Genomics? Nebula Genomics is a direct-to-consumer biotechnology company focused on providing individuals with access to and insights from their own genetic data. They offer genetic testing, data analysis, and personalized health reports. I based my decision to get my genome sequenced by Nebula on overall positive customer feedback, high-level privacy, competitive cost, and complete access to my genetic data. I first selected a plan. Nebula offers three plans, Standard for $99, Deep for $249, and Ultra Deep for $899, plus membership. The main differences between these packages is the level of accuracy, with the Ultra Deep providing the highest accuracy. The best bang for buck for most people is the Deep package. Once I receive the kit with instructions, I provide a cheek sample. No blood draw required. I sent the kit off and answered survey questions online on alcohol consumption, family history of cancer, diet, fitness, health, medication, and sleep. Several weeks later, although it took months for me, I got private access to my online data. Nebula presents data as personalized health reports that are based on the latest scientific studies. Plus, new reports are added every week. Most of these reports are created by calculating polygenic scores which reflect the cumulative effect of various genetic variants in our genome. These scores are then compared to those of other Nebula Genomics users to generate a percentile. A higher percentile implies that your polygenic score is greater than the average of Nebula Genomic users. Here's what my data showed. But before I looked at the reports provided by Nebula, I did my own analysis of 90 genes listed by the American College of Medical Genetics and Genomics that are associated with diseases known to have established intervention. This list includes genes linked to diseases such as heart disease and cancers. Fortunately, I didn't find any suspicious genetic variants. Before we get into disease risk, let's talk about my predisposition to certain health traits, some of which were spot on, some not so much. Here's what they got right. First one I'll talk about is predisposition to older age at first birth. This was spot on since my wife and I welcomed the birth of our first child when I was 39 years old. Predisposition to insomnia and bad sleep quality. While I have no issues falling asleep, the quickness of which annoys the heck out of my wife, I do wake up in the middle of the night and often have trouble falling back asleep. Predisposition to heavy alcohol consumption. Accurate again since in my late teens and 20s I would often overindulge in drinking alcohol. Predisposition to increased physical activity. They nailed this one again, since I make sure to get some sort of exercise every day. One more thing, the results also showed that I have lactose intolerance, which is true. Here's where they seem to miss the target. Predisposition to increased coffee consumption. I very rarely have more than one cup of coffee per day, while on most days I don't even drink coffee at all. Predisposition to faster resting heart rate. My resting heart rate has been in the 50 to 60s for the past 15 plus years. On a side note, they didn't detect two variants associated with facial attractiveness. Well, they're wrong. Right, mom? Now on to disease risks. Increased risk of osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis is a degenerative joint disease that affects cartilage, the connective tissue that cushions and lubricates the joints. This result is spot on. A few years back, I started to experience pain in my hips and was clinically diagnosed with early onset osteoarthritis of the hips. This single result validates my decision to get whole genome sequencing and makes me wish that this technology was readily available and accessible over a decade ago. I also apparently have an increased risk of high cholesterol, LDL. LDL cholesterol, also known as bad cholesterol, is a type of fat found in the bloodstream. 
In general, high levels of LDL cholesterol increase the risk of developing heart disease and stroke. This finding is alarming since my serum LDL levels hover near the high range of normal and my dad has struggled with high cholesterol levels, even recently suffering a heart attack from which he thankfully recovered. I also have an elevated risk of irritable bowel syndrome. Irritable bowel syndrome is a common disorder that affects the large intestine. Symptoms of IBS can include abdominal pain and cramping, frequent bowel movements, diarrhea or constipation, bloating, gas, and feeling full after eating a normal sized meal. Over the past decade, I have been experiencing more gut issues related to an increasing list of food intolerance. After multiple tests and probing, the official clinical diagnosis was IBS. Now let's move on to how I started using this data to improve my health. While general advice such as get more exercise, better sleep, and improve your diet is helpful to some degree, I knew that I needed a personalized approach to yield maximum benefits. So I decided to take these results and create specific action plans based on the current scientific literature to monitor and prevent or treat these conditions. Unfortunately for me, finding out I have an increased genetic risk for developing OA was too late for my hips. The condition became too advanced and I had to undergo bilateral hip resurfacing. Fortunately, now I have genetic and clinical evidence that shows I'm more prone to OA and my goal is to spare my remaining joints for as long as possible with a focus on the knees and back. As a result, I've completely revamped my exercise program to lower impact activities such as biking, walking, yoga and resisting bands instead of the weight training and running that I used to do. I've also modified my diet to include low inflammatory foods, which for me largely consists of eliminating processed sugars, seed oils, and certain types of foods such as nuts. I've also started to eat a modified ketogenic diet. I've started supplementing with hyaluronic acid, glucosamine chondroitin, methyl sulfomethane, and omega-3s regularly. I've started using an infrared sauna three to five times per week. Lastly, I've incorporated red light therapy since there's some evidence that it can help in pain management and reduce inflammation associated with OA. Now here's how I'm tackling my elevated LDL risk. Because of this result, I have started to eat less meat to decrease my saturated fat intake. I also will be more rigorous to have my cholesterol levels checked annually. As for medication, if the need arises, there's always the option of medication to decrease my elevated cholesterol levels. I'm always keeping an eye on emergent therapies that lower cholesterol, such as the gene editing approach by Verb Therapeutics. As for my clinical diagnosis of IBS, it has sent me on many food elimination diets, biopsies, antibody testing, and microbiome testing. I plan on continuing these types of tests to decrease symptoms and identify triggering foods. I find that oral microbiome testing and cut microbiome testing have been beneficial in identifying which bacteria types were present in my sample and which foods to avoid. More on this in another video. I now supplement with digestive enzymes and fiber and regularly drink peppermint teas to help improve symptoms. So here are my final thoughts. I don't regret getting my genome sequenced and choosing Nebula Genomics to do my sequencing at all. In fact, my biggest regret is not getting my genome sequenced earlier have led me to make these interventions earlier and potentially increase my health span. I find my results are not only helpful but critical to my long-term health and well-being. Having said this, I should caution there are downsides to getting your genomic data and for this reason I recommend that you do your thorough research to understand the possible consequences of this type of testing and ideally receive genetic counseling. I'll talk more about the negative side effects of direct-to-consumer genetic testing in a future video. If you want to know more specifics on how I'm using direct-to-consumer testing and data from wearables to improve my osteoarthritis, IBS, and general health, then comment below and hit the subscribe button.